So thankful to be with you once again for another episode of the program Watch Therefore and a very special episode because we have a very special guest, the co-founder with me of the ministry Blessing Israeli Believers, Bible prophecy teacher and author, John McTurnan. Welcome to the program Watch Therefore. Well, thank you, Brother Dove. I'm glad to be here. It's so exciting that John's here because of the relevance of what he's teaching today. And I had uh, taught on the Psalm 83, Isaiah 17, and I touched on Obadiah in this war. But we have our Obadiah expert here today with very even startling things to share from this often forgotten book of the Bible. I want to start off briefly with a word of prayer. Please. Oh, Father in heaven, please bless this special time we have and bless every viewer today in our Savior Jesus' name. We thank you, Father. Amen and hallelujah. And John, I just want to turn you loose because we don't have much time. I want to just hear from you today. Obadiah is a very important book for right now. That's right. Uh, the background is most important that I share with the listeners here because it really establishes Obadiah for the time we live mm -hmm, in now. Mm -hmm. It was written approximately 600 BC by Obadiah, and that we don't know anything about him. That's it. It's only 21 verses. And the, the book is in two sections. 1 through 14 is about uh, the house of Jacob, which are the Jews, mm -hmm. interacting with the house of Esau, which is their cousins, mm -hmm, by the way, mm -hmm. Edom. Sure and how Edom hated Jacob. And when the Babylonians came in to destroy Jerusalem, they aided the Babylonians in the destruction. That's right. uh, they were talking about they wanted the temple raised, destroyed completely. Psalm 137. That's, that's what, that, that merges with mm -hmm. Obadiah. They talked about how they gloated, how they were full of joy and all how they tried to steal the property mm -hmm. of the Jews. They, they assisted the Babylonians, and therefore they were stealing the Jewish property. Mm -hmm. Then they aided the Babylonians in killing the Jews. There's no like indication that they actually did it themselves, but they captured them and hold them, mm -hmm. and they called the Babylonians to come That's right. and take the Jews away. And of course, the Babylonians were, were killing them then. Sure. So the Bible shows you this pattern of Obadiah, of Esau against Jacob. Mm -hmm. That's the background. Then we go to verse 15, which as far as this topic, the day of the Lord is near, and I have to say, Dove, uh, there's two phrases in the Bible before I get into it that are very important. The day of the Lord has come. Mm -hmm. That's about the second coming of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. He's coming to judge. He's coming to set up his kingdom. Sure. But there's another series of scriptures, there's four of them, that says the day of the Lord is near. These are warning scriptures. The awesome day of the Lord, the tribulation period, and into the, the second coming of the Lord right. is near. Mm -hmm. So when something happens, physically happens, it's a warning to everybody on earth that the day of the Lord is near. So important. And Obadiah has the key verse. Yes. Those 21 verses, verse 15 says, the day of the Lord is near, and it uses the phrase, all heathen, mm -hmm. unbelievers. As you have done to Israel, it'll be done to you. Your reward will be upon your own head. We're watching this right now. Exactly, right? though. Exactly. Wow. Yes. Exactly. And as you've done to Israel, it says those scriptures that were la that are laid out. I wish we had more time. Mm -hmm. That are laid out, you know, like trying to steal, the, to kill the Jews, steal their property, steal the good, mock them, and all of that. If you manifest that, if you bring that, that'll be brought on you. Mm -hmm. So we go down to the key verse now, along with verse 15, is verse 18. And let me read verse 18, because sure. it talks about an all-out war between the house of Jacob and the house of Esau over the land of Israel. Does this sound familiar? It's today's news. And, but this is a war that's a fight to the finish. Does this sound like today? Well, that's, they're wanting to wipe Israel off the face of the earth, they say. And... and this isn't like previous wars. You know, where, uh, Israel fought Egypt, 
and it was a military. Mm -hmm. If civilians died, it was kind of almost by accident. The fog of war kind yeah, of thing. Yeah. Right, right. This is this is this goes back to the Nazis yeah, targeting Tar civilians they, with brutality. Yeah, yeah. I mean, vicious. I, I, cutting little babies' heads off. I mean, does it get any worse no, than that? No. All right, so listen to verse 18, which is connected with the day the Lord is near. Mm -hmm. The house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. And the house of Esau, that's the, the enemies of Israel that are on the land, mm -hmm. Hamas, mm -hmm. Hezbollah, the, the uh, Islamic Jihad, they're all there Those on the land. Those even in the West Bank. On the, yeah, that's right. Uh, Judea and Samaria. <clears throat> For stubble, and they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord has spoken it. This group that is there on the land that wants to obliterate Israel, they want to wipe the name of Israel off the land, they want to kill everyone. Mm -hmm. The Bible says there's a battle coming on, regarding that, and all of them are going to be killed or driven off the land. None will be remaining. Wow. Because what they tried to do to Israel is going to be done to them. This war started October 7th. On October 6th, I would have talked in theory mm -hmm. about this. Someday this is going to happen. Someday though. in the future. Someday in the future. The day after, probably the day on the 7th, but the 8th, I would say, though, looking at Obadiah and this war and Hamas and Hezbollah and Iran and Syria and the Islamic Jihad, they want to literally, they have a covenant to destroy Israel, right. kill all the Jews, and take Jerusalem. And here's the next thing. There's a name. They have named it, this war. Mm -hmm. They have a name for it. It's not just we're going to fight Israel. Mm -hmm. They're calling it Operation uh, Alexka, which is the Alexka Mosque on the Temple Mount. In Jerusalem. Deluge. So, and they said that the battle, they're fighting Israel over the temple, over Jerusalem, and the Temple Mount. And that leads to other prophecies in here. So this war is different than all the other wars Israel's had over the land. They didn't really fight over Jerusalem. It, was, it wasn't the object of those prior wars. So as we wind this thing down today, John, could you kind of close out this segment, uh, or would you like to close out this segment with this thought, the day of the Lord is near. Yeah. This war, it, it has to play out, but I believe it's the beginning that we will see that the, the, it's going to fulfill Obadiah, the day of the Lord is near. And if that's the case, we're in a big countdown now. Wow. And everybody, and the next show will get into what you do during the day the Lord is the here. next part of this show the, the next, next segment show but I want all your listeners to realize this is not just a war this is over the covenant land this is over Jerusalem this is over the Temple Mount they want to annihilate and kill the Jews it's going to result in what Obadiah says is going to happen Israel is going to win and they're all going to go off the land if there was ever a time to wake up, it's now. If there was ever a time to watch therefore and be ready for our Savior to come for us in the clouds, when is it, John? We are getting a physical example of the soon coming. Of, when I mean soon, it's, it, it won't be 20. I, I don't know what soon is, near. But it's not 10 years. It's not five years. God's giving a, a lead-in for everybody to be warned, to be prepared for, for Christ's coming and be ready for him. And any moment, even today, today, King Jesus could come for us in the clouds. Watch, therefore, and be ready. There are important things I want to share with you on this break, but before doing so, I want to say thank you. Thank you to all who have been partnering with Watch Therefore, our television program, our ministry blessing Israeli believers and poured out for the nations. Oh, truly, the Lord has raised you up for such a time as this. And folks, we if you squint just a little, you can see the finish line. King Jesus is coming for us. Let's continue to partner together with this Watch Therefore message. Conditions in the world are worsening all around us quickly. According to the prophetic scriptures, our Savior Jesus said this generation is heading rapidly 
to the time of the world's worst trouble ever. What's the answer? The watch therefore message. And this message stirs the lukewarm to repentance and gives urgency for the lost to re repent of their sins and receive Jesus as Savior and Lord now. Yet we're only on most of our networks once per week. And there's something we can do together, which I'll share in a moment. If we're going into 200 countries, 200 million homes, but we can air more and still go wider and further. First, let me share with you some of the missions initiatives also of this Watch Therefore ministry. Romans 1.16 tells us the gospel and discipleship is to the Jew first and then to the nations. And we know the faithful, wise, blessed servant is watching for the master to come and giving others their food in due season. Messiah Jesus is the bread of life. So we take him and the gospel and discipleship to the Jew first with our ministry, Blessing Israeli Believers, co-founded by myself and our ministry partner, John McTurnan. We've learned that one of the best ways to bless Israel is to bless Israeli believers in Messiah Yeshua, Jesus our Lord. They're getting out the gospel, making disciples, saving babies from abortion, helping Holocaust survivors in the name of Messiah Yeshua, and so much more. And then our To the Nations ministry poured out for the nations. Oh, we've got special work. For years we've been doing in Africa. Right now we're really honing in on Rwanda and the Congo, Uganda, and other countries who are asking us, please bring this discipleship to our church, to our lands, to our country, to our region. Yes, and so one of the great things you can do is get on our monthly newsletter for Blessing Israeli Believers and Poured Out for the Nations. As you do so, you will keep up with prayer points that are so urgent. We need prayer partners to continue to intercede for this work, to see it go forward. Also, for those who want to sow financially into this ministry, and as always, I've been saying this since we started the program, I'm gonna say it again. If you haven't believed in Jesus the Lord as your savior, please don't send any money into this ministry. It's our desire that you would simply be our guest today and that you would receive Jesus as Lord and receive eternal life. But for those who have already been saved and you understand the principles of sowing and reaping and laying your treasures up in heaven, this is a great place to do just that. And there's three pri primary giving platforms. One, the Watch Therefore television broadcast, and that's how we can spread this further and wider. You can prayerfully and financially partner with Watch Therefore. There's also those who want to sow into Israel through blessing Israeli believers, and then into the nations. You can financially support our work in the nations. And with those newsletters, you can really keep up with how and where you're investing. And, and so, this is the way for us to partner together like that faithful, wise, blessed servant who hears, well done, thy good and faithful servant. When our Savior Jesus comes for us to take us back to that place he's been preparing for us. Remember, watch therefore and be ready. King Jesus is coming for us any moment. Welcome back to this very special and urgent episode of the program, Watch Therefore, and it pertains to what you're watching on TV, uh, on the news, pertaining to this war in Israel. And John McTurnan, our Obadiah and Bible prophecy uh, expert and author and teacher, is with us. When we left the first segment of the program, John, you were kind of uh, closing out with the day of the Lord is near, as we see in the book of Obadiah. Could you please continue? I want to say one more thing about Obadiah. Sure. I'm thinking about it. Obadiah prophesied 2,600 years ago. From the time of that prophecy till right now, Obadiah, and I don't recommend this, but if you read commentaries, it talks about all in the past, some moral mm -hmm. issues and all. It never, these commentators never looked forward, That's right. but it's the day of the Lord is near. Christ has not returned. That's right. Hello. So here's the way I look at it. Obadiah was written 2,600 years ago in the past, and it's like God jettisoned it right to right now. Yeah. It's the book for right now, mm -hmm. Dove. Mm -hmm. It's alive for right, literally, mm -hmm. right now, and it's portraying or warning what is coming. But the coming is on top of us because of this horrible war has just started sure. in Israel. 
So that's the importance of Obadiah. But there is a book that follows Obadiah called Zephaniah. Mm -hmm. And Zephaniah puts kind of meat on the bones for what Obadiah was saying. Okay. Now, in how many people, or preachers or ever, sermons have you heard from Obadiah or Zephaniah? Very few. If any. That's right. Maybe a verse or two were picked out mm -hmm. of it. So we want to look at Zephaniah now. Because Zephaniah talks about the day of the Lord, the day the Lord is near, and it talks about two specific, well, two specific items. One is has to do with Israel, and uh, you, you, our watchers and listeners may be shocked. Gaza, yeah, Gaza. What we're watching right today now. is we're either watching this or what will develop into this. And, and the other is Jordan. Uh, the Bible doesn't call it Jordan. Mm -hmm. It calls it, there were three sections. That's right. The northern part was Moab, excuse me, Amman. Mm -hmm. Central was Moab, and the southern was Edom. Mm -hmm. Those three today make up Jordan. So let's look at Zephaniah. Sure. And, and then there's a parenthesis in Zephaniah that's directly for us today. A watch therefore parenthesis. Yes. Yeah, I like okay. that. Yeah. All right, so we go to Zephaniah uh, chapter 1, verse 7. And it says, Hold thy peace at the presence of the Lord, for the day of the Lord is at hand. There you go. There it is. That's that word. That's the second coming of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then we go to verse 14. And I, run, I want to read 14 and 15 because it gives a vivid imagery of what's happening at the, going to happen at the day of the Lord. Go ahead, John. The great day of the Lord, now listen to this, is near is near, a double emphasis. I mean, listen, when God's Word does that, very seldom you see double emphasis mm -hmm. like that. That's like, pay attention in His Word. Pay attention. Watch this. What is repeated is right. important. Right. It's like, uh, Dove, I want you to read this. Do you hear me? I want you to read this. Yeah, yeah, that, I like it. That, right. That's, that's what God's Word is saying. Sure. Hasteneth, hasteneth greatly, even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty men shall cry and there bitterly. The, uh, that day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble, a day of distress, a day of wantonness, a day of dissolution, a day of darkness, a day of gloominess, a day of clouds and thick darkness. Do you see, see that description? Yeah. This isn't like you know, bad thunderstorm. <laughs> That's so, right. No, this is the real thing. No, God is... This is the coming of Jesus Christ, and there's judgments falling for man's wickedness. The wrath of the Lamb, right. as we see in Revelation. Yes, that's exactly what it says. And then we go to chapter 2. So in chapter 2, it's telling us what's happening the day the Lord's near. What, just like Obadiah. The example in Obadiah is the all-out war between the house of Jacob and the house of Esau. In Zephaniah, it's telling us really like kind of the results of that war, all right? But here's something that's incredibly important. Hallelujah. You're, you're going to love this. I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I call it the parenthesis. Yes. Because there's three scriptures in chapter 2, 1, 2, and 3 that have nothing to do at all about the, the day the Lord is near. You know, because when we get beyond that, it starts talking about Gaza, it starts talking about Moab, it starts talking about Ammon, mm -hmm. but there's a parenthesis in there of three verses. So let's look at these three verses. Sure. Because they're going to edify your, your readers and listeners. And me too. <laughs> gather yourselves together, yea, gather together, O nation, the word nation, not desired. Not desired. It's a nation that's not desired. Now, God very seldom in the Word refers to Israel as a nation. It's usually Zion, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the children of Israel, you know, sure. like that. And named Judea. Mm -hmm. So that nation. Uh, and then it goes on to say, before the decree bring forth, the, uh, before the day that pass as the chaff before the fierce anger of the Lord, so, in other words, before his, the day of the Lord and his judgments, before the day of the Lord's anger come upon you. Now listen to this. Remember, this is about this nation. Mm -hmm. 
Seek ye the Lord, all the meek of the earth. Now that term, though, the meek of the earth, what does that reflect on Israel or does it reflect on the church? It reflects on believers in Messiah Jesus exactly right. who are walking in the Beatitudes. Right. The meek exactly. shall inherit exactly the earth. Exactly right. Right? Yeah. Right, though. So, but the time frame of this is the day of the Lord is near. Mm -hmm. So for believers, this, these scriptures are right now. It's like God is speaking directly to you, directly to me, how to get ready, how to be prepared for the coming of Christ and the rapture to go to be with him. That's right. It gets even better. Yeah, yeah. I'm listening. Which have wrought, which have done his judgment or word. People that are doing his words. That's, right. That's who this is addressed for. They're walking in the word. Seek righteousness and seek meekness. Seek righteousness. There's two righteousness. One is uh, imparted in us through faith in Jesus Christ, right. what he did on the cross and shed his Amen. blood. That allows us to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. But there's a righteousness here on earth right. that our walk here on earth lines up with God's word. That's right. So God wants us to be lined up with him, getting ready for Christ coming for us. Hallelujah. And meekness. Yeah. yeah. Not arrogant. You know, you know, just a meek like the Lord was meek. It's the opposite of those who are crying, death to Israel, death to Israel. These are the arrogant and the prideful. On the full other end of the spectrum is the meek of the earth. Right. Amen. See, now, Jewish believers are in that. Of course. But not the nation of Israel. Yes. So this is a, has to be a message to the believers in Jesus at this time. This is the rapture in the Old Testament. It is the rapture in the Old Testament, but it tells us it, to get ready in the day of the Lord is coming, to get ready to be with the Lord. In the midst of these things that we're seeing right now. Right now. That you're teaching from Obadiah. Right now. It's and right Zephaniah. here. Yeah. See, so that's the parenthesis because chapter one is about the day of the Lord, the day of the Lord is near and all. Then you come to chapter two, these three verses are not addressed to Israel, the nation of Israel. It's addressed to the world believers, right. which is us, the church. Yeah. John, we've, we're, we're running out of time very quickly. And I'm just so thankful that this is where we wound up with this teaching, yes? Because we're reminded, here we are at this time, and now is the time to watch therefore and be ready. Amen? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. John, thank you so much for being on the program today. Dope, thank you. It's been an incredible blessing to have you with me today. And um, our teachings line up so well. And, and I pray you're such a blessing to everyone watching. Folks, if there was ever a time to watch therefore and be ready for the rapture, our Savior Jesus coming for us to take us back to that place he's prepared for us. It's now. Watch therefore and be ready. Having heard these things today, wouldn't you agree now is the time that whatever you're going to do for the kingdom of our Savior Jesus, whatever he's called you to be and to do, now is the time. There's no time to waste. And where are you with our Lord Jesus? You might say, well, I'm saved, but I'm not really following him the way I know that I should. Make it right today. Make it right today. Repent. Ask our Savior Jesus to forgive you, confess your sins. His word says in 1 John 1, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness and then go forward with all your might following our Savior Jesus. Love the Lord your God with all, with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Oh, hallelujah. And, and then maybe you, you would admit I haven't ever really received Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I've never really repented, turned away from my old life, my, my sins to follow him and received him as my Savior and Lord. I don't know that I'll go up in the rapture uh, with his people. I don't, I don't know that I've truly been forgiven. Today is your day. Today is your day. Today is your day to be saved, to be forgiven, to have eternal life, to know that you won't go to hell. I say to people, if someone angrily would ever say to me, Schwartz, go to hell, my answer would be, I can't. I'm saved. I've been given eternal life.
because Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. Today, you can do that. You can call upon his name. Whoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Oh, hallelujah. Call upon his name today. Oh, Jesus, Lord, forgive me. I've sinned against you. I, 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 I've sinned against our Father in heaven. Please forgive me. I believe you died on the cross for my sins. You were buried on the third day. You rose from the grave. Save me. Forgive me. I want to turn from my, my sins and my old life and follow you, Lord Jesus. And if he'll do that, he'll do that. He'll save you today. And, and maybe you're doing that right now. We want to participate. We want to help. Uh, we have a, a brochure. It's free, of course. And it, it's called How to Begin My New Life in Christ. And it has your essential, most important first steps to take when, when receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior. There's contact information on the screen there. Let us know that you would like that brochure and we'll get it out to you right away. Yeah. And for everyone who's watching, oh, Father in heaven, please tremendously bless all of our viewers today. Thank you for letting us live in this special time, Lord Jesus. Amen and hallelujah. Remember to watch, therefore, and be ready. King Jesus is coming for his people any moment.